in terms of what we're watching this week, it's a big week for economic data. There is one release that everyone is keeping an eye on. That's January's Consumer Price Index. Economists are expecting inflation to rise a half percent for the month. That's a notable increase from figures seen in recent months. We've seen a deceleration. That would be an acceleration for more, or a real acceleration for more. Let's bring in Cumberland Chief U.S. Economist David Burson. David, thanks for being here. Um, so what do you think? What do you think we're going to see from CPI? Will it, in fact, show that those who are talking about disinflation, maybe not so fast. Well, certainly for, for January, we're going to see a reacceleration in inflation. I think the 0.5% estimate that uh, is the consensus is probably going to be pretty close. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not seeing a disinflationary trend. You know, the, the, the decline last month, you know, we're not seeing negative inflation. We're not seeing deflation. So a, a bump up this month probably shows too much inflation. Last month certainly showed too little inflation compared to what's actually happening in the economy. Well, David, what is actually happening in the economy as it pertains to inflation? Well, inflation is slowing, um, not slowing nearly as much as, as, as it showed last month. You know, if, if you look at the 12-month change, um, you know, we still have some, some pretty hefty inflation. It's down substantially from the peak, and we'll probably see inflation continue to moderate as the year goes on. But even by year end, optimistically, inflation is still probably going to be up three, maybe three and a half percent from a year ago. Now, that's still well above the Fed's two percent target, but well below where it was at the end of last year. So what does that imply about what the Fed's going to do about it? Right. And all of this this continuing market disconnect that we've been talking about between the Fed telling us that they're going to keep going till they get inflation under control and the market, which seems to think that they're not. You know, I think the market is hoping that inflation comes down more quickly or we go into a recession more quickly and that will force the Fed's hand and, and force them to ease. Um, you know, if, if inflation is somewhat sticky, if it's still over 3% by year end, uh, even if we go into a mild recession, the data's always lag. Uh, my guess is that the Fed will not ease this year. It may not tighten much more. You know, may, we might see Fed funds at the peak going a little above five, but that's very different from an expectation that by year end the Fed will ease. I think it's very unlikely, you know, unless inflation just plummets or we go into a meaningful recession earlier in the year, it's very unlikely the Fed will ease this year. So I think we'll see Fed funds, even at year end, over 5%. So David, even if we do get a, a mild contraction in growth, uh, which a lot of economists uh, certainly are looking for, you, you don't think the Fed will try to just improve that by cutting rates? No, I don't think that the Fed will, unless it's a more meaningful downturn where inflation is, is where unemployment is soaring. You know, the, the Fed does not want to make the same mistakes it made in the 1970s when um, downturns in the economy caused the Fed to ease monetary policy before inflation was taken out of the system. And that simply caused inflation to bump up even higher when we got the next expansion. The Fed does not want that to happen. Ultimately, that's a much worse course for the economy. The Fed is probably correct to stay the course, getting inflation down, unless there's a really big recession. David, I'm getting a lot of mixed reads on the, the health of the U.S. consumer. On one hand, you've seen them work down their savings to very low levels. Uh, and you, I, I think you are seeing that work down appear in a lot of restaurant results, but they don't appear. Uh, I'm seeing some of that work down also going towards vacations, but they don't appear to be out in the malls buying willy nilly or, or, or aggressively. What is the true state of the U.S. consumer here? You know, the consumer can't be in bad shape if we're seeing strong payroll numbers and strong wage numbers. And we're seeing both of those. Now, yes, it's true that consumers have, have spent down much of the excess savings they generated during the COVID downturn, much of the government money that was given to them. But still, with you know, last month's payroll number over 500,000 and wages going up pretty rapidly, consumers have a lot of wherewithal to spend, and they are spending it. Now, they may be changing from savings to current income and perhaps to credit cards as well. But this week we get retail sales for January. That's likely to be up quite a bit as well, almost 2%. We're looking for an increase of 1.7 to 1.8%. We already know the light vehicle sales were up strongly for the month. And if you look at data from the major credit card issuers, they're saying that consumers over the month continued to spend. So, you know, the consumer is not dead yet. Uh, good to hear. David Burson, thanks so much. Cumberland Chief U.S. Economist, thanks for your time this morning. Glad to be here.